Hi, this is Richard Clark, the IBC Product Specialist for Technoplast. And we're here at CTR building at the University of Louisville to demonstrate how to work with our isopage system and our IBS chain station. We appreciate the University of Louisville giving us this opportunity. Thank you. The first part of this, I want to discuss and go over about the ISO cage and how the system works. Uh, you have an air handling unit that has two motors that is supplying both pre and HEPA filtered air out to the rack, and then air coming back to the air handling unit is both pre and HEPA filtered before it is exhausted out into either room or it can be exhausted into the house exhaust. This rack that we have here is a ISO 36, so there's 36 cages, but only 35 can be used because one cage always has our magnetic gauge that is showing what the actual pressure is inside of the cage. We are running right now at 80 pascals of pressure uh, to the 36 cages. Airflow actually comes in across the supply plenum on the top that's in the back that is completely filled with air before it pushes air down to the vertical supply plenums into the cage where it circulates. It comes in at the top, circulates through the cage, and it's exhausted. The air for us cannot be above 0.2 meters per second per guidelines, so that the air at animal level here is at 0.02 meters per second, so that it's not going to be detrimental to the animals. The air also, when it comes into the cage, because it has a HEPA filter at cage level, it's HEPA filtered there before it goes into the cage. When it, we allow gravity to help us drop the airflow down when it comes out of the cage through the exhaust, back over across a pre-filter and then the HEPA filter on the rack. We're now going to go over the touch screen. Initially, when you walk into the room, the screen will be black, uh, because as it's showing here now, so that that light is not going to disturb the animals at night. To get the screen to come back on, you just touch the screen. So we're showing here the screen has the time uh, and uh, the date in the middle. It is showing the number of cages, 36 that it's running at the 80 pascals of pressure and the showing what the resulting uh, air changes per hour are. The temperature and humidity, which is taken again from the exhaust and is not a reporting mechanism. And then also the battery life shown here 100% that the unit should always be plugged in to maintain that 100%. This is a brand new rack, no animals here yet, uh, but in order to remove a cage from a rack, you push in at the bottom of the cage, allowing the cage to lift, and then the cage can be removed. While this cage is out, you can notice there is actually a yellow tag that dropped down that is showing that this cage is not docked properly. Once I insert the cage just with one finger, it shows that that cage is now docked.
So now we want to go over a couple of different things. And first, what we have here, we have one of the ISO cages. We have a HEPA filter that comes with uh, each cage that is double bagged and is radiated. So this is a sterile HEPA filter. And I have a non-sterile HEPA filter that's going to show how to install it. And then we also have here what we call the decom trolley, which I'll use to show you how to set the cage up to be autoclaved. So now to unlock the cage, you pull up on the two white tabs, pull down on the blue latches, pull out so that you can remove the top easily. The top then can be laid over open. You have here the silicone seal that provides you a good connection to the plastic. You have the blue silicone diffuser that also is keeping the HEPA filter in place. To the HEPA filter itself, these HEPA filters, you can autoclave them up to five times. You have a tab here on the HEPA filter that must correspond to the notch here in the top of the cage. You line that up. You only press on the outside, never on the center, otherwise you will damage the HEPA filter. And you press down until the HEPA filter is complete installed. The diffuser is put back onto the hinge. And if it's, that shows that that HEPA filter is not locked, otherwise it would easily engage. So pull it to proper in place. press down and it's locked in properly. Now the cage is ready for us to be able to take the top, pull it back up and put it back onto the cage and it's now ready to be autoclaved. We're now again at the decon trolley. As it is, this could be put into a bulk autoclave, and you can put one more row on top. You have three parts here. You have the trolley, which is from here down to the casters. You can have another uh, piece, and this is the uh, third piece. To remove the top from the uh, second portion, you unlock. There's one on the back that's already unlocked. And now you just remove this and it's ready to go into a small autoclave. So now we're putting the cage onto the decon trolley. The pressure here is pushing down on the top to ensure we're maintaining that same pressure. You have the nozzle engaged for the HEPA filter port. You unlock the tabs, bring the latches down. Now this cage is ready to be autoclaved. The cage has now come back from autoclaving. You've allowed the cage to cool for a minimum of 20 minutes. You then lock the cage back down properly and pull the cage off the rack. And now it can go back onto the rack or go into the biosafety cabinet. We're now going to go over what you would be doing on a daily basis. So what I'm going to do is go put on PPE and we'll show you what we do from that point. remove the front cover. We'll then show how to turn the unit on as well as how to connect uh, the dump tank in order to get it ready to, to work.
need to do is remove the front cover. You unlatch the front, allow it to drop forward, and now it can be removed. Now to get the unit prepared to run, I first take out resting board that we have. It has a uh, notch that allows us to put it in place on the bow safety cabinet. We're now going to turn the unit on. You first press the green power button. Press one, two, three, and power. The unit now is going to start up and to get it to its uh, running set point. It will, uh, because it's not reached that set point at a time, will go into alarm and you will hear it make, uh, go into alarm, but it will be easy to just uh, silence the alarm so that it doesn't uh, keep making that noise. Once it gets into its normal running set point, the alarm goes away and you don't have to worry about it. So there's the alarm and I silence. You need to allow the units to run a minimum of 15 minutes to ensure that we are providing good clean airflow coming down to the work surface. So now we have the dump tank and it is ready. We have it filled with the solution that we're using as the sterilant and it's filled to the disinfectant level. If it's below this level, then the unit will not run. Uh, the dump tank will not operate. So we push the unit all the way back, making sure that the hoses are out of place. We take the anchor piece and lock the unit down. The unit is now locked down. We take the first connection piece at the top, snap it in, lower piece, we now have the last piece, which is the electronics, hooking to the unit and uh, attaching it properly. Then the dock tank is ready to be used. We're now going to show how we work inside of the biosafety bed. This means that you always work with a buddy, so it'll be myself that's going to be the technician doing the manipulation table inside of the IBS, and then a technician that's going to be bringing the dirty pages or the pages that are clean on the inside, sterile, but that are dirty on the outside, putting them through the dump tank of the IBS to be sterile to be working with on the inside of the IBS. First, I'm going to make sure that the light is on so that we can see what we're doing in, in working within the inside. I have the resting board that we use for transporting and uh, things from the inside back out and the sterile that we'll be using. I also have underneath where the dump tank is because as the pages come out, they're wet. So we want to try to minimize the amount of moisture that's inside the valve so we can have. So at this point, the unit is ready to go. The outside of the duct tank shows a green light, meaning that we can open the door from the outside and insert a uh, cage from the outside. So now we'll bring the cage from the outside, bring one over, and it's inserted into the duct tank. And then as soon as the door is closed, then the light starts flashing red, showing that the unit is filling up with the solution uh, to sterilize the outside of the cage. So now the, duct, the cage is actually floating, and you can see that the duct tank is nearly full here. Once it's full, then that's, uh, that is done, then it's going to start to drain out. At this point, I would prepare to get to work inside, so spraying 
arms completely down. The fork on the inside of the train station. And now I cannot remove my arms, my hands from the train station because I am ready to work with the cages as they come out of the dump tank. The cage now has gone through the dump tank. I have a green light on the inside, so I open the door and pull the clean sterile cage now to the inside of the duct tank. I close the door and lock it. It is now showing red on the inside and prepared to go green to the outside. I can now access, unlock the cage, take the top off. I would leave it off to the side. And here at this point, I can manipulate the mice. The water bottle that was here, I could take it and set it into the top here because it's a sterile area. So I could then work with uh, the mice and do any type of techniques that I need to do uh, work with. After I'm done, I then uh, grab hold of the latch that's closest to me. I bring it up and I swing the top to gain access to the other side. I can now close the cage and it's locked, ready to be used. To come out, I would slide it to this point and the technician could take the cage from this point. So I have a container here that has a solution of the sterile sufficient amount that when I dump the cage into the sterile, I can completely submerge it before the contact time that I need. So I take the cage, insert it, and press it all the way down where it's completely submerged into the solution. Typically, we had, we had this other with the IBS where it was roughly about six seconds uh, that it was uh, contact time. We then bring the cage out and now this cage is sterile and ready to go over to the IBS. We appreciate the University of Louisville giving us this opportunity. Thank you.